My dearest Festool, I love you so. If there were only a way for me to work for you without really working for you. Ooh, Dr. Pepper. Anyway, maybe I'll come up with some projects that I could demo at the AWFS show in Vegas. That's it! I'll make a step stool, an Asian inspired end table. The possibilities are endless! I am so excited! Welcome to episode 20 of the Wood Whisperer video podcast. Now today things are going to be a little bit different than normal. It's going to be completely disorganized and I'm just going to kind of wing it. Um, we've been extremely busy lately and I just wanted to put a video out there so that all you guys who are just wondering where the hell these videos are can have something to explain what's going on. Um, Nicole, come over here. She's going to help me because I'm going to forget all the details of the things I want to uh, to explain to you guys, so in case I forget something, she's here to remind me. But anyway, essentially the past few months I've been focusing on a huge armoire commission. Um, and I've got a number of these to do, and unfortunately I'm under the gun because they have to be done by September. So we're talking multiple big projects, and anybody who's been into the uh, chat room and saw the live streaming webcam, you've seen this project and finally just delivered it today. Um, so it was a huge cherry armoire uh, with uh, walnut accents, dovetail drawers, finally got a good amount of hands on with the lead dovetail jig, which was an excellent experience, probably one of the best of all the jigs I've ever used. Uh, I do plan on doing a podcast on that in the future, so that's going to be a really good one. Um, but the, the piece itself just turned out great. We put a couple uh, coats of tongue oil on it, and uh, the customer couldn't be happier. It turned out beyond his expectations, so very happy with that. Now, I still have other pieces to do for him, but we're at the point now where we've got the big Vegas wood show coming up. Um, and I'm going to be at the Festool booth uh, for all four days. And my goal there is to short, sort of just show people what you can do with the Festool system. Um, you know, I don't live completely within the Festool system in my own shop. I use all of my other tools, but it is possible to just have Festool stuff and do very well. Uh, so my goal is to design a few projects to show people how you can do just that, but still do some really creative and neat stuff. So that's actually what I'm focused on now for the next two weeks. Uh, and then after that, I'm going right back into, into the arm wars. So that's the reason why I haven't really been able to do the videos, because I'm trying to get this stuff out of the way. Um, the truth why am I standing here? I feel like an idiot. No, because <laughs> you're helping me get this done. Okay. Encourage me. <laughs> So what do we have new on the website? Oh, uh, we got a lot of new, see that's why she's here. We got a lot of new stuff. First of all, if, uh, if you haven't been to the website, you really gotta check it out every day because um, it is a blog, first and foremost. So I do post and just keep like updated information, interesting things that are going on, uh, you know, having to do with woodworking. We've got a chat room in there where there's always at least 10, 20, sometimes 30 people hanging out. Talking about wood, it's like a real-time forum. It's like, it's a lot of fun. Nicole's in there all the time. Um, she I don't actually really talk about wood though. No, she does the night shift, and <laughs> and that's when the other uh, girls, uh, usually it's girlfriends or wives of woodworkers, come in and they talk about shoes and flip flops. That's a really good idea to have like a wives. The evening. The, the spousal yeah. hour. <laughs> but it's it's kind of funny. So she plays music, and everybody just kind of chills out. It's a whole different mellow mode that goes on yeah. in the evening. That's in the evening. <laughs> Uh, but for me, in the day, it's all business. Um, so we've got the, uh, the new and improved Wood Whisperer store. Uh, so there's a lot more uh, products on there. It's a lot easier to navigate, a lot more variety. Uh, so check that out as well. Uh, streaming video, of course, every single day. If I'm in the shop, that camera is on and you could watch, interact, ask some questions uh, using the chat room. It's a great feature. Uh, we have a frapper map, right? Um, so that if you are curious where the other whisperers are from, uh, just go into the to Wood Whisperer Live, check out the, uh, the map down there, and you'll actually see we've got a pretty interesting collection of people as far as, uh, you know, even internationally, we've got a lot of people. Yeah, it's really neat to see where everybody is kind of at that it, that's watching the podcast. And Mark will actually be putting a post up to kind of guide you through that process if you're not really sure how to put yourself on that map. So I will? Yes, you will. Apparently I will. <laughs> uh, the other thing we've got is a, a, a new link up there on the top bar. You can see it's a link to our favorite podcasts. Uh, we're both fans of podcasting and other people's podcasts. So uh, there's some really good ones on there. So if you like the Wood Whisperer and you want to see what other things are, you'll find there's a very heavy tech influence on most of them because that's just kind of what we're into. Uh, but they're still good. It's still quality stuff. Definitely check those out. 
Um, and there's also a new feature that's called what I've been reading, essentially. So on the left-hand column, it's just a little tan box, and it just shows articles that I found interesting on other people's blogs, like Popular Woodworking or uh, Woodworking Magazine. Um, the glue tube and, uh, and yeah, I'm fine woodworking as well. So if I see something cool, I just mark it and it goes there and you can actually read that article too and, uh, and read what I'm reading. Um, and I think that's about it. So right now what I'm going to show you is what I'm working on for Festool uh, for the, uh, the show. So I'm trying to design some simple projects that aren't too difficult, but uh, you know, something realistic to accomplish while I'm there talking to people at the show, uh, but something that's unique, something that they may not have seen before. Um, so that's kind of my mission and my goal, and that's what I'm going to show you today. And what will I be doing at the show? <laughs> Nicole's going to be walking around promoting the hell out of the Wood yes, Whisperer yes, until yes. Uh, she gets until she gets thrown out. Yes, basically. So yeah, I have a little bit of swag. So if you find me, give me she'll a have uh, T-shirts and and stickers and buttons and tape measures, underwear no. and socks. What is he talking about? And. Uh, It'll, it'll be a good time. So if you are going to the show, make sure you stop by the Festool booth. Yep. Come see me, say hi, and uh, you know, take a look at the Festool stuff and see if you can't find this little cute blonde lady over here and uh, hit her up for some, uh, some stickers and uh, underwear. Just stickers. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I had to come up with a couple different projects, and the first one that I'm doing here is just a very simple, elegant step stool. And I'm not even 100% sure what it's going to look like, but I did do a few sketches and a few drawings, and I don't know how easy it's going to be to get a close-up of that. This is my first little sketch down here. It's a little side view. Can you see that? And then up at the top, it would be the front view. Okay, so we've got some angles to contend with. Should be interesting to see how these joints play out. And the shape obviously is very unusual, a little bit different. So, you know, just before I go too far, this is not going to be a, a, a how to project video. Um, I just thought this was a good opportunity to give you some insight on what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and you'll see this quickly beginning, middle, and end. Um, and if there's enough interest generated in this particular project, again, I don't even know what it's going to look like, so it may look like crap, but if it looks good and you guys like it, we could certainly do a podcast on it in the future to show you actually from beginning to end how to make it. So the first step. The first thing I need to do is figure out how I'm going to make this come to life. Uh, the most important aspect of this is that odd, unusual side profile. Um, so what I actually did was I grabbed some scrap material. This is just some eighth inch um, MDF with a, a you know, fake wood veneer on the one side. And I basically drew out my shape on a big square. And how did I arrive at this shape? Well. Think of a step stool. You want something that's balanced and has a lot of support. If your steps are here and here, you want to make sure it doesn't tip forward. So its natural instinct is to stay down like this. Um, and I just wanted some curvature. And I mean, really, this was just something out of my brain and looked OK to me. I wasn't really careful. The only things I did check was I have a step stool from the house. And I wanted to see what the spacing on these steps were. I also wanted to see what the angle of the front was. And I used those as my starting point and made modifications from there. So I just use a standard protractor and some little angle gauges. All these are you know, standard drafting tools. Um, I drew a 65 degree angle up. That's this angle here. Um, and the top is, of course, parallel to the feet. And then I just drew a nice little curve, what seemed to look good to me at the time. Uh, cut this guy out, use the oscillating spindle sander to clean up my curve and some sandpaper. Um, and that's, that's really it for the template. Now, I get a lot of questions on when is it appropriate to do a full-size drawing? When should I just take a scale drawing and consider that good enough? Um, well, when you're doing something completely experimental, maybe you're making a new chair, you know, and you don't know if it's comfortable enough to sit in. Those are the times that you have to draw these things out uh, full scale to really get an idea of how it exists in 3D space. So this is one of those pieces that I didn't feel comfortable jumping into until I had something down that made sense to me. So in addition to the side profile, um, I also created what would be the front profile. Okay, now this is just drawn. It's really only going to be for reference. I'm not going to cut it out part of the process like I am with this. This is only going to be for reference. But what you see here is each of the sides and if this were a full-size sign piece, you could see that it actually is going to sit at a 10-degree angle, like so. Okay, so it 
comes in this way, the other one will come in that way and it gets smaller, skinnier as it goes up to the top. What this does for me is it shows me the spacing of my first step, my second step, and my top piece. And it also shows me, most importantly, what the angles are gonna be. So the bottom of my side piece is gonna need a cut, a bevel cut. The top will need a bevel cut. My little steps here are gonna need bevel cuts. And all of these are gonna be assembled using Festool's Domino. Again, you know, a lot of this is an experiment. So I'm gonna see how well this stuff works. Um, we'll have some fun with it, but the point is to just completely live within that Festool world and see what we can do with that. Now filming this little podcast, episode 20 here, uh, was kind of an afterthought. So I've already done a little bit of work. Uh, one of the things that I've done is I took a bunch of 24 inch pieces of alder. I went with something inexpensive because this is a trial run and glued them all together to make a wide panel, wide enough to accommodate my shape. And once I had that, I took off all the glue, made sure it was nice and smooth. And I used some double stick tape and attached this piece Actually before, sorry to skip ahead, what I actually did was I just threw this down on the surface and traced it with a pencil. So I have my general outline. Then I took the jigsaw and I actually cut the shape out, leaving it about an eighth of an inch proud of my line. So I have a little bit of extra material to trim. Then I took some double stick tape and attached this to the alder. Uh, put a lot of pressure down and then I took a pattern bit and a router and went around all, you know, on all sides to trim it up so I get this exact shape. Um, so I already did one, but let's go over and see what the other, uh, see how it's done with the other one. Now that we've got our template uh, double stick taped to the substrate here, uh, we're basically going to flush trim to get the actual contours and the curves of the template. So I've got a, uh, a pattern bit because I want the bearing to be on top. And Festool has these uh, dust shrouds, essentially, that rotate and follow around. So the camera won't really be able to pick up much of the action as I go around. But what you should notice is how insanely awesome the dust collection is on this. Very little, if any, dust will get out of here because it's all packed in there and goes right up through the, uh, the tube and into the vacuum. So let's go ahead and give this guy a shot. Now that both of my side pieces of the step stool are cut, I can kind of give you a little bit of a better view of what this is gonna really look like here. Both of these pieces, again, are gonna come in at about a 10 degree angle, matching that profile drawing that I did, the full scale drawing. Uh, and they're, they're gonna come in basically something like that. Okay, and the steps, we're gonna have a step down here, a step down here, and a top. Um, so now our challenge is to cut the bevel on the feet, cut the bevel on the top, and then also start to look at the bevel for each of these steps and how that's gonna fit in place. All right, so check this out. The challenge here is to figure out how to make these dominoes work. We've got a, see these are one of our sides here, okay? This needs to be cut at a 10 degree angle, which actually I've already done, and I need to attach the top to it like so. Okay, and the top obviously needs to be level and horizontal while this leg comes in an angle and the other leg will do the same. So the question is, how do we get those dominoes in at an angle? Um, do we, you know, do we, do we figure out what the angle is and angle it this way? So the problem is, a step stool like this needs a lot of support and I think I might even be pushing the limits of what these things can do. Um, so if you angle the domino in, let me get a closer shot of that. You basically have two choices. You could put the domino in parallel with the board itself, or since the board is gonna be tilted, the perpendicular point of this 10 degree cut here brings the domino at more of this angle, okay? So you can see we're not gonna get as much penetration, and I want as much as possible because I want as much support as possible. So what I decided to do was actually 
See, it's a lot easier to plunge the domino in when it's, you know, perfectly square. It just, you know, it's like, in that sense, it is like a biscuit joiner uh, where, you know, if everything's 90 degrees and square, it's always going to be easier and less room for error. So I plunged in as deep as possible for this domino um, when this was still square. Plunged in as far as I could. Then I took it over to the circular saw and I trimmed it off at my 10 degree angle. Now the domino of course still fits in there. I've removed a little material here, but I get the full benefit of the length of this domino being dead center in this board. So it's as strong as it can possibly be. Now the only place I need to establish, see, cause when this board, oopsie. Yeah, when this board meets up with the top like this, uh, the angle has to come somewhere, you know, I mean, this is on a 10 degree angle, this is horizontal, That's, and we already know that we cut this one straight into that board, so something has to be angled, and in this case, it's going to be the top board, uh, is the lucky winner of the angle, so in this case, I do wind up using the domino on uh, a 10 degree slope, on an angle, to plunge in here and make this hole. Um, another interesting thing to point out is I, you can see the domino hole, the mortise goes all the way through and that's just part of what I'm just trying to experiment with. You know, what does a through domino tenon look like? Um, is it attractive? Is it not? But either way, that's what I'm doing. Um, so I got a piece of MDF that I'm plunging into uh, as a sacrificial board underneath the board that I'm working with. So um, let me show you a couple of these cuts just so you can kind of see what, what you're in for if you want to try something like this. Now just so you can see, one of the great things about this tool is you could just put layout lines and marking those up to the index points on the domino itself, you could actually lock down exactly where you're going to have the location of these mortises just by having your vertical and horizontal uh, lines in place. So that's, that's a real good thing. Okay, so I'm throwing everything down, got my MDF backer. Don't need much in the way of clamping here, but one quick clamp will do the job. And then in comes Big Daddy. You see there's a little center point mark here. Okay, you got one in the front as well. And these little tabs up above here, that actually is what I use as my uh, horizontal line reference point. So, let me line everything up and uh, let's make a cut. Now it may seem a little bit crazy, and in fact it feels a little odd for me too because I never do this, uh, but to do all of my alignment by eye. Um, but the bottom line is, if you got everything where it's supposed to be and everything's lined up, your eye is pretty damn good. And I've done a couple projects already where I've had to use this method several times, and it has worked splendidly. So here's the other thing, when you turn this sucker on, it may jump a little bit, so you may have to readjust after it's on. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and plunge, plunge right through here and make the mortise. Not bad, not bad. Let's make the second cut real quick. Okay, so as you can see, got a couple tenons in here just to show you the direction it's gonna go. Each one goes at a 10 degree, or well, in this case, it's a 80 degree angle. Uh, but this would be our top. It's gonna sit like so on top of the legs. Uh, so now we can start working on the mortises on the legs. Okay, we're set at 10 degrees here. We're going to make a nice bevel cut on the top. There you go. Now here's an interesting point. Um, my legs are all done. I got the top done, ready to install. And we've got two steps that need to go in place here and here. And the question is, okay, I've got a diagram here. If I've done everything right and I'm pretty close, I should be able to use this diagram to decide how long um, my steps are gonna be. 
so I could actually put it right up against the drawing and you know put my marks on there. The problem is that's in the ideal world and unfortunately we don't live in the ideal world and uh, in all likelihood I'm not dead on exact to my drawing so it might be detrimental to cut my shelves ahead of time my or I call them shelves but my steps ahead of time um, because I don't know for sure that I'm exactly at 10 degrees I don't know that I'm uh, got those locations exactly in the locations they are on my picture so it's not a good idea this is where you get yourself in the trouble uh, just relying on pure measurements whereas using and I talk about this all the time the relative dimensioning technique I'm not going to take this drawing I'm not going to measure this and then cut my uh, you know my step to that length what I'm going to do is pre-assemble the piece together lay it down and then I'm going to make this fit in the spot that I want it to go so it's going to be pretty close to this number but I can guarantee you it's not going to be exact um, so again relative dimensioning is, is something you should incorporate into all of the work that you do uh, and especially in a case like this I don't have to conform to any specific size I'm this is a piece I'm making uh, for myself so it's if it's an inch longer or half an inch shorter or whatever it's not a big deal um, but it makes it you know the relative dimensioning concept uh, makes this job a whole lot easier but you have to know when to start using it and this is exactly the point uh, you know where I, I could really screw things up if I don't Okay, now the front of my steps are all going to receive a little piece of walnut. It's going to serve sort of like a, uh, you know, an anti-slip tread, I suppose, uh, but mostly for decoration. Uh, so there's a, a 25 degree bevel on the step, and I want to glue this piece onto here. And obviously, once you get some glue on there, this is going to be really difficult to do uh, without some brad nails. Uh, but if I can, I like to avoid that as much as possible, so I'm just going to use some clear packing tape to make this job a whole lot easier. Check it out. Okay, so here's my trim. Here's my step. I'm just going to use this little metal straight edge to prop this up a little bit so that these are a lot closer to being even with each other. Get a piece of packing tape. Just try and get it as close to the full length as you can. Make sure the ends are even. stretch it across. I'm really focusing on the alder right now, not so much pushing it on the, the walnut just yet. Okay, now once I feel that these are pretty close to lined up, I can pull it up into the tape. Again, keeping it lined up on the edges. Just slowly start to press against the walnut now. Basically, you just want a really nice, tight seal all the way across. Okay, now once I do that, I can remove that straight edge. Okay, now what we've done is we've essentially just created a clamp, whether we realize it or not. As long as this tape has a good grip on both sides, you can see that naturally it doesn't want to close all the way. Okay, it kind of just hangs out and flops there. But when we put a little glue in there, and then we actually apply some more pressure and put some other pieces of tape across this edge. It's going to squeeze that glue in place. The tape is going to stretch a little bit. And that stretching action is what actually is going to serve as a clamp, essentially. And you can use this method, actually. I've seen uh, people who make small boxes and things like that. They've used this method to do that um, instead of using clamps. So if you're putting the sides of a little baby box together and you've got them mitered and you're just not sure how to get the, all the parts together, that's the way to do it. Okay, I'm just going to spread that glue around in there. A little bit on this side. That looks great. It's going to be perfect. So now I just grab a couple pieces and I'm going to run them across this way. Stick it to the walnut here. Now 
and pull it across, good amount of finger pressure. Same thing on this side. Just push, did a good contact at the ends there. Look at that, we even got some squeeze out. There you go. So give that some time to dry and I think we're gonna be happy with those results. Now all my pieces are cut and at this point I'm giving everything a nice thorough sanding. So we're going to about 150, 180 actually on the faces. Uh, on these edges, I need to break them a little bit. I don't really want to put on a big profile or anything. Um, so you could use a router bit to do this, but uh, that's going to give it a little bit more of a, con almost too consistent, a little bit of a machined look. And I really want to go for something that's a little more earthy, a little more hand hewn. So uh, basically 150 grit paper, doing the whole thing by hand. And it's a pretty significant break, but that little bit of inconsistency here and there actually adds to um, the appeal of the piece. And, and you'll see what I mean in the final product. Um, so got a lot of sanding to do. So all the pieces are sanded and everything's pretty much ready to be glued up. I'm just gonna do one last dry fit, make sure everything looks good and give you an idea of uh, what the final product looks like. So I'm gonna start popping in some tenons here. Okay. Now, in case you haven't noticed, I'm actually making exposed, exposed tenons. Why? I don't know. Thought it looked cool. So we'll find out if it was a good idea or not. Okay, so now that I've got the tenons sticking up, I could start putting in the pieces. Top step. And let's add the other piece. Once again, put my tenons in place. Yeah. Now what would be really cool is if Festool decided to start making these tenons in different species of wood. Of course, I could always make them myself, but I'm too lazy. Okay, that's that. And the last part is our top. My tenons are as far as they can go in, leaving a little bit of a, a proud area here that I could saw off and flush, flush it up later. And there you go. That is Bench de Spagnolo with walnut accents and uh, exposed domino tenon joinery. Got the exposed tenons on the top as well. Pretty nifty. Um, I'd be afraid to step on it at this point. You know, I haven't weight tested it. It is, it is being held in by just a couple dominoes, but they are uh, some of the thicker ones. Okay, that's a pretty reasonably thick piece of material, it's beech. Okay, and it penetrates pretty darn far into the, uh, into the piece here. So, um, yeah, I don't know if it's ready for the market, but it's certainly uh, ready to be a sample to show what you can do with the, with the Festool system. What do you think? I like it. Does, do we want it? I would use it. Should I give it to my mom? Or do we want it? I don't know. My mom will be upset that it doesn't fold up and fit behind a refrigerator. That's true. So, I guess this one's ours. Anyway. There you go, guys, and um, well, I guess that probably does it for this this particular episode. Um, I hope this, I, you know, I kind of went a little bit long-winded on explaining myself and how these things are going to go, um, but, you know, hopefully this was fun, got enough information, enough little tips that it was uh, worth your time to watch. Um, so until next time, build a stepladder. Roll them. Yeah, action!
Welcome to episode 20 of the Wood Whisperer video podcast. Yep. Why are you reacting? Don't react. Sorry. <laughs> oh, thanks, that helps me. That's okay. No.